Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. And in this Red to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which as usual has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with NVIDIA and news of the next generation of GPUs from the company. No, this isn't a video that's a couple of months late and I'm discussing Turing. Instead, I'm referring to GPUs which will launch in 2020, at least if the website my Navi, M Y N A V I, and yes, I'm aware of the irony given we're discussing GPUs and the competition with NVIDIA and AMD, have sources which have uh, told them that uh, NVIDIA will be using the 7nm Samsung process for the next generation of GPUs and it will launch in 2020. So NVIDIA along with IBM will be a launch partner for this process and the 7nm process by Samsung will have risk production and other bits and bobs happening throughout 2019 ready for retail silicon in 2020. Now this means several very interesting things. It most likely means that in 2019 we will not see a replacement for Turing. I mean there is a distinct possibility that this might not be the case. I mean technically speaking in the short term NVIDIA could just say eh, I'm going to go with TSMC but if this news is accurate they probably won't do that. They're just going to just bide their time and go with the 7nm process from Samsung. I don't want to get into all of the ins and outs of 7nm uh, TSMC versus Samsung because it's somewhat outside the scope of this video. But what you can take away from this is that they are very close to one another. There are some subtle differences where uh, one process has a small advantage here or there, but if one architecture is just superior to the other architecture in terms of design, that will more than uh, make up for any deficits in the actual node itself. So this does mean, at least in 2019, the year we're currently in, which is still kind of weird to me that we're already in 2019, but that's off topic, uh, AMD will definitely have the process advantage over NVIDIA. NVIDIA are, of course, currently on Turing, also known as the GeForce 20 series, which uses the 12NM FFN process from TSMC. Now, for those unfamiliar, it is a tweaked design of the 16nm process which we saw in Pascal. When I say tweaked though, we don't mean a shrink. Instead, it's just improvements to reduce uh, leakage and other bits and bobs. So really, they are pretty darn close to one another, just with a few small uh, updates here and there. However, it is something that NVIDIA have managed to get a lot of mileage out of. There were reports before Turing launched, I believe it was several months, maybe three or four months before Turing launched, that uh, NVIDIA were internally considering at one point or another using the 7nm process. I did actually ask an NVIDIA employee about this in a recent interview, but he said that he didn't know because that was not his area of expertise and I'm going to be actually having a second interview with NVIDIA at some point or another and I'm also setting up an interview with AMD which most likely will take place after CES. So do stick around with the channel and I'll remember to link the NVIDIA interview of course in the description of this video if you want to go ahead and check it out. So, the long and short of it is, at least in 2019, AMD will have the process advantage. The first advantage is it means that AMD can produce smaller silicon at cheaper costs, and the second is that they can produce larger dyes at, well, more powerful levels of performance. The questions I've got when it comes to the uh, future GPUs from NVIDIA is what are they going to do? They have so many different strategies available to them. Are they going to go with a monolithic die? Are they going to go with an MCM type of design, which we know they've been experimenting with. We know AMD are jumping all over that train with their Infinity Fabric and so on. So I wouldn't be surprised in the least if the following uh, architecture to Turing does, if the follow-up architecture to Turing, excuse me, does actually feature an MCM type of design. But NVIDIA do have a lot of options. They could go with a Turing 2.0 type of philosophy that would pretty much take Turing, but just fix any of the issues. They would increase the number of CUDA cores, they would run at a higher clock speed, and naturally we could also see improvements to the overall design. Like for example, they would increase the clock frequency of the GDDR6 memory. They could also increase the number of RT cores or just improve the efficiency or functionality of them. They could increase the number of tensor cores 
whatever. The fact is that they have a number of options and with an MCM type of design, assuming they do go with that, it could provide NVIDIA a pretty good option for 2020. And don't forget, NVIDIA have in the past, when they've built a new architecture, they really squeezed the lemon. Uh, if you were to look at the early GeForce designs, uh, the GeForce 256, they had the 256 launch, which of course with SDR. Then after that, there was the DDR variant, which used double data RAM, so it drastically increased the bandwidth. Then they released the GeForce 2s, which did go a long way to improve the original architecture. We saw drastic improvements to, of course, memory bandwidth, and they also increased the clock's frequencies and blah, 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 blah. Then we had Tesla, which was the GeForce 8000 series, which was the first unified architecture from NVIDIA, uh, which was bloody impressive. I actually had an 8800 GTS, yeah, GTS. And that card was a monster when it first launched. But then NVIDIA subsequently really squeezed the lemon. And then we had what was essentially a rebranding with the 9800 series and they didn't really tweak the design until like the 200 series of G-Forces. So obviously it cost around 1 billion US dollars for the development of Turing. So I wouldn't be surprised if they pretty much just took what design uh, they ha currently had, just improved it, just tweaked it and went from there. But much of this does depend upon the market forces of AMD. And don't get me wrong, like NVIDIA's uh, definitely in a good position in the market, but they face two major competitors. The first is AMD, and Navi, I do suspect, is going to be great at taking market share, especially in the rather lucrative two to three hundred dollar mark uh, GPUs, if the performance is up to par, and I suspect it probably will be. Then, of course, you've got Intel, which are the dark horse in the race. Intel, with the Intel XE line of cards, the discrete GPUs, is set to launch in 2020. And things get even more uncomfortable, both for AMD and NVIDIA, because from what we're understanding with Intel, with Ice Lake and subsequent uh, CPU architectures, the actual iGPU, which is integrated GPU, inside of Intel's uh, chips is going to see a significant uptick in performance. We've discussed that at length before, and I say according to the company because it's probably, it will, but until I actually get the darn thing in my hand and start testing it, I'm gonna have some level of skepticism. But regardless, if it does pan out to be roughly on par with what we're expecting, which is probably along the lines of like a, you know, a, a, an AMD APU, possibly a little bit faster, depending on what they actually finally clock all of the, the GPU frequency and all, you know, other bits and bobs, it will mean that the low end GPU market might start to dry up a little bit. I don't think it's gonna hurt the people who are, would be buying, let's say an RX 570 or a GTX 1060 type of class GPU, but the lower end market, like the, you know, the 1030s, that type of thing, they most likely won't be profitable anymore because most folks are gonna buy a GPU which, uh, sorry, are gonna have a CPU which is gonna have a GPU in it. That is assuming, of course, that the Ryzen 3000 cloud also has a GPU built in it, and of course there are a lot of questions by the time 2020 rolls around. But either way, NVIDIA are under a lot of uh, pressure, so it is going to be interesting to me what pans out and what exactly we're going to see from the company with the 2020 GPU launch. And while we're on the subject of NVIDIA GPUs, I might as well add in a bit of a quickie, and that concerns the RTX 2060. It has been listed early on the website Canada Computers, which of course, as you can probably guess, is a retailer based in Canada. Now the pricing here is actually rather expensive, although it is in Canadian dollars, it's 529 uh, Canadian dollars, which equates to about 390 to 400 US dollars. Let's say about because obviously prices uh, and exchange rates fluctuate all of the time. For reference, the earlier leaked price for the uh, for the 2060 was around the 350 US dollar mark. So. I am not ready to panic yet regarding the pricing because it's possible that the pricing is just a placeholder or it's possible that this particular variant of the card is more expensive or it's possible that this particular retailer is price gouging and let's face it, no retailer ever price gouges, ever, right? Um, 
or it's possible that Nvidia have decided to raise the price of the card last minute. Yesterday I covered a new story that the team behind Project Cars 2 and along with other racing games, Slightly Mad Studios, were actually going to be making a console. The CEO actually announced the console rather early, around three years early actually, and Mark Bell took to Twitter just today and over the last several hours to defend the console because this system has been met with some level of skepticism. As a quick refresher, if you are unfamiliar with yesterday's story, it is said to be priced at a similar level to what the PlayStation 5 and next generation Xbox will be targeting. But because it's going to be launched in around three years, the system, at least according to Mark Bell, will be the most powerful available on the market. Now, he did confirm because people were skeptical about whether this was a serious uh, play for the market, that he was already, along with his studio, in discussion with both AMD and NVIDIA, along with other companies in regards to the hardware. Yesterday he did say that uh, they were already in discussion with vendors, but today he added further clarification and insisted that they were already talking with AMD and NVIDIA. And get this, he also said that they were looking to produce an AI ASIC, which would be usable in games. Now, this is rather interesting to me because AI currently really does leverage the CPU, but the GPU, at least in theory, would be drastically more uh, powerful and will allow much better AI when it comes to games. After all, we all know what deep learning's doing right now, and there have been some tests. I believe it was on Call of Duty, but don't quote me on that. It was either Call of Duty or Battlefield, where the team ran an experiment. They built a neural network, and they had the neural network observe a human player and how that player would react to various situations. So the a uh, team then provided the bot a series of rules. They would tell it, okay, well, th these are your goals. Don't die, you know, defend this area of the map, shoot this bad guy. And after a while, the neural network started to learn. And then they pitted the, uh, the neural network bot up against the traditional team of AI bots. And well, there was just no competition. The neural network, absolutely the deep learning trained uh, player basically decimated the traditional team. So, in theory anyway, an AI ASIC in the console would be pretty impressive. Other users were questioning whether it really was a console or whether it was just a glorified PC. To which Mark rather correctly stated, well, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox, along with what we're hearing about the next generation consoles, is essentially a PC. After all, they are using PC hardware. We have an AMD GPU, we have an AMD CPU, but they are just with a unified architecture, so they have unified system memory and other bits and pieces. The one uh, console which gets a get out of jail free card here is actually the Nintendo Switch, and even it uses uh, hardware with the Tegra processor, which we've seen in, let's say, the Nvidia Shield. So it's not like it's this super duper custom uh, architecture which we saw back in the days of, let's say, the uh, Sega Saturn or the uh, I don't know the Nintendo uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System or something like that. And even those actually, they were using like the Z80 or something like that for the processors. So that maybe doesn't count so much. He then went on to say that what does make the console isn't necessarily just the hardware. He rightly pointed out it's the software, so that's the ecosystem it's built around, that's the, the infrastructure, that's the operating system, and so on. Although we don't know that many details yet concerning the operating system, so whether it's going to be Windows-based or Linux-based or proprietary, that's not yet clear. And of course, just how easy it is to port games over to the system is going to really matter. He also said that one of the primary purposes of this system will be virtual reality. And apparently the system will be capable of between 60 and 120 FPS per eye. Of course, that most likely does depend upon the game and what developers are targeting and so on. But he said that the idea here is that you can have a system which you can basically just put in a box, easily take your friend's house and then just go from there. 
The counter argument to that though is with VR helmets, all of the accessories which go along with them, the console, the power cores and all that stuff, it's still not exactly easy to take with you. It's not like, I don't know, taking a PlayStation 4 to your friend's house or something like that where it's really simple. With that said, the console I don't write off as a failure or anything like that. It does depend heavily on how it is supported by the developers and what the ecosystem they build around it is like. I know I said this yesterday, but it's still really baffling to me that Valve did not make a play for this back in the day, like when Steam machines were really coming out, because I don't think they could have, like, you know, crushed Microsoft or beaten Sony with a stick, but they could definitely have made a great case for themselves of just having a system which is for all intents and purposes, using SteamOS, but without all of the back end of traditional Linux. And it just is basically a Steam GUI for all intents and purposes. Maybe you can mod it and run stuff, but really it was just designed around a Steam, a Steam GUI and you could install games and it would be built around an x86 architecture. The problem is, of course, that if they were to do that, games would eventually become to the point will come to the point where you would no longer be able to run them at certain settings so they would need to constantly update hardware so maybe that's why valve couldn't do that maybe they couldn't square that circle with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video no more stuff like share comment and subscribe there's also some amazon affiliate links which you could find in the description of this video if you want to use them to buy i don't know a toaster oven or something like that because anything you buy of course does help the channel out immeasurably and i'd like to thank all of the new subscribers who have jumped on the channel. I will of course be covering CES 2019 the best I can. Just a quick reminder, I will be flying next week back to the UK, but I will be able to cover AMD's conferences and possibly a couple of others before I hop on a plane. And then it will be a business as usual with video production. But with that said, take care of yourselves and bye for now.